Hello, everybody. Welcome to Telly Talks, where we talk about life, growth, relationships, and all things in between. I have a very special guest with me today, Gabriel Rosado. He is a professional boxer, and he commentates as well, too, and we're going to talk all about it. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks Cheers for to our water. For sure, yeah. <laughs> we're staying healthy here, y'all. We're staying healthy here. So for the people that don't know your journey, how did you get started, and how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, I got started in Philly, you know, so Philadelphia is a boxing city and, you know, it's a tough neighborhood. So I was always fighting in the streets and in school, always getting suspended. And um, but I was always in love with the sport because I was a fan of Mike Tyson and Holyfield and Tito Trinidad. And, um, you know, I was like in the wrong path, you know, with the wrong friends getting in trouble. And then I decided let me do something positive and turn this this aggression to something good, and I got into boxing. Absolutely. So yeah. you started in Philly. When did yeah. you feel like, all right, I'm going pro? I, I already knew I was going. I was I was like, I'm gonna be fighting on the high, on a world class level. Right. Before I even had gloves on. You I knew just, it. You knew you had that yeah, power. Yeah. Because I had um I had all the posters on my wall in my room, so I idolized these guys. You know, like I said, Roy Jones, Holyfield. And I remember just feeling like, man, I, I know I'm gonna be on, on, on a big stage like them one day, and I and I didn't enter a gym yet. So when I went into the gym, it this was is like, like fighting like in high school days though. Yeah, yeah. So you started kind of late. I started late. I started at um, I started at 18, so that's late for boxing. Yeah. But I was I was always an athlete, so I was always good at sports, and I was good with my hands, so. Um, when I entered the gym, I had a basketball in my hands, and I remember the, the the trainer at the gym was like, "Man, stick the basketball. You too old for boxing." So I walked away, kind of discouraged. And my trainer, Billy Briscoe, he ran into me in the street and was like, "Yo, uh, if you serious, come back tomorrow." So I came back and I was just grinding it out with him, and you know I was dedicated from the from the start. How long were you training with him until you're like, "All right, we're we're one ready." Year. <laughs> one year, and you're one like, year. "I'm pro." Yeah, one year, because. Um, it was like there was nothing for me to do in the amateurs because, right. you know, I didn't have a big amateur background and those tournaments and things like that. And I was like, I was trying to get to the bag already. Right, <laughs> so right. I was like, Yo, what am I doing this yeah, for? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm not trying to fight in these tournaments and I'm not making no money and I'm fighting dudes because I went open right away. Mm -hmm. So like I was fighting, I was fighting guys with 200 amateur fights and that amateur style was so difficult because it's a boxing style. You know, it's like, um, it's a point system rather than trying to hurt your opponent. Uh, so I transitioned over fast because I was learning. I was, I was, you know, in Philadelphia, you're around Bernard Hopkins. You're around like dudes that, you know, Ivan Robinson, you're around these guys. So you learn fast. And I was a gym rat. I was always in the gym. And um, I was sparring Bernard Hopkins from the beginning. How like was six that? months in, I was sparring Bernard. He's whooping my ass, <laughs> but Bernard loved it. I but was he like, was an OG he, in the game. Yeah, 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 he's an OG. But you know, it was when he was, um, it was around the time when he was getting ready for Kawasaki, mm -hmm. and it was like, hey, Gabe, Bernard needs some work, and I was like, okay, okay. so I'm, all, I'm all excited, but they're like, but you gotta go Southpaw, and I'm like, oh damn, Southpaw, and you, you know? didn't know how to fight Southpaw, and I, yeah. I didn't know how to fight Orthodox. <laughs> so how long learn. were you like training with Bernard? when you actually got in the, like how long has your, like I guess your training yeah. um, sessions, like how long was that before you actually got in the ring with Bernard? Yeah. And it's like, all right, now I'm in here with like a professional fighter and mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, well I kind of knew what I was doing. I was just following the instructions and they were telling me what they wanted, what they needed. So it's funny cause Kawasaki style was a little awkward. Uh -huh. So being that I'm learning, my style was kind of awkward. So I was kind of giving them what, what he needed. Right. Um, and I just, I was just like a sponge, just learning, learning, That's so dope. learning. And and he saw that hunger in me, like he saw that I, I was really hungry. And he, plus, you know, he's he's taking me to school every day, and um, but I'm coming back. And he's like, okay, that kid got hurt. Oh, so he awesome. poured into me, and like, um, you know, throughout my career, he always he was always a, a mentor for me. That's amazing. Yeah, That's yeah, amazing. so it was crazy. To get in there with someone as talented and yeah. to be able to absorb, you know, all of that teaching is just yeah. a dope it's situation crazy. to be in in general. Sure. You know what I'm saying? To go to the gym and and be pro in one year, that's a blessing within yeah. itself too. So your first pro fight, 
how was that like for you? Like, what did the lights bother you? How was that <laughs> moment for you being pro finally? Yeah, I, I was excited. I remember uh, the dude I was fighting. He was big, like 50 cent. He was husky. <laughs> <laughs> and he came in like 10 pounds overweight. And they were like not going to, they were going to, you know, cancel right. the fight because he came above the weight limit. But I was so excited to fight. And I, I had so, so many tickets because my fam was going. Right. They were supporting. And I'm like, no, it's cool. I'll spot him 10 pounds. And it was like, yo, he's going to be big the day of the fight. And I'm like, it's cool. Let's go. And um, I knocked him out in the first round. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so that was just my attitude. My attitude was like I was on go. Right. Like, you know, I didn't care about the weight or none, none of so that. So how is it for you losing weight, gaining weight? Like, do you have a problem with that, you know, as a boxer? Because I know with Deontay, like, we don't deal with, like, losing weight. He just yeah. eat, 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 yeah, eat. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> it's so fun. much different. You know, knowing other people that box and then have to lose weight or gain weight or, you know, have to maintain that weight yeah. weight range. No, it, it's difficult, but it's just, you know, it's just it's a lifestyle. You have to live and just keep your weight down. You know, as I get, as I got older, obviously it gets harder. Your metabolism mm -hmm. changed because 18 year career is, is long. Yeah. So I started at 54, 60, and then 68. So 54 was hard to, to make that weight What cut. do you walk around? Um, I go up to like 195. Oh wow! Yeah. So you're losing a lot. Yeah, I'm about 95 right now, so it's oh, crazy. Wow. No, I'm 95 now because because I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you fight, when you fight, yeah, like yeah, what yeah. do you normally walk around at? Normally, normally I like to stay like 10, 10 to 12 pounds away from the the weight. Wait, limit. okay, yeah. got it. So it's not too crazy for yeah. you to lose. Because like, yeah. I was like, wait, 195, and then you're going down to 154. That's crazy. No, it's crazy. But well, that was years ago. I, the last time I fought 54, I think was 2014. Gotcha. So it's been a minute. But what um, do you like fighting at best? Um I like I like super middle. Super middle. I feel more comfortable. Super middle. But but yeah, but the weight cut it's hard. I remember when uh when I fought uh Charlo who's fighting Canelo Jamel. Mm -hmm. I fought him in two thousand fourteen. I, I had went up in weight and I had to cut back down for that fight. And I just loved the opportunity to, you know, it was it was headlining on on I think it was um, HBO at that time or Showtime, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, I remember that weight cut was so hard for me where I was I was like delusional. I was seeing burgers floating in the air. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was, wow. I was, yeah, it was How crazy. How much did you lose for that? I lost, it was crazy because I went to Puerto Rico and, you know, the climate is hot. So right. it was easy to drop the weight. But when I got to D.C., the fight was in D.C., there was a blizzard. And for me to, you know, drop the rest of the weight, I need to go run outside. But right. it was a blizzard out there, so it really... It hurt me bad to make that weight. And then you could get sick too. Yeah. Did you catch a cold and yeah, stuff? Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I did. You know, but it's a science to all this. Yeah. You know, that was me like in my the early stage. You know, as you get older, you understand meth methods. You understand your body more. And you understand like the little things, how how they count and how they matter. Absolutely. Or you know, you're kind of a little reckless in the beginning, in the beginning Absolutely. part of things. So I, I was probably a little more, a little irresponsible with my weight cut. And that's why I made it hard for me. So, you know, you got to be responsible. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, boxing is a discipline. Oh, yeah. You got to be disciplined in boxing and all, sure. all the things just to make everything mentally clear for you. You mm -hmm. know, whether it's weight cut, whether it's food, whether it's sex, whether it's yeah time spent in the gym, conditioning, mm -hmm. just all of that is like a discipline, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's tough. It's definitely. tough. And you got to be in great fucking shape yeah, like yeah, yeah. you gotta be in shape no, like crazy. i'm tired after the first minute of yeah, throwing yeah. punches and it's, you know it's, it's mental more than anything because yes. it's like you could be in great shape or whatever but if mentally you're not preparing yourself for like adversity that you're gonna face in the ring you know let's say you get surprised and a guy puts you down and you didn't expect that now you ain't ready for that right so you might respond you might not even know how you're going to respond because right. mentally you didn't even put yourself in that mind frame where it's like, yo, there's a chance I could get hurt. If I get hurt, I, you know, I'm, I'm responding like this. Absolutely. But when the moment happens, it's like you you react properly. It's Absolutely. like when I fought um, Bechtemir. Mm -hmm. He's um, he's knocking everybody out with, with this big left hook to the body. He was vicious. They call him the bully. So when, when I fought him, I knew he was going to land that shot. And I knew that shot was dangerous. And I'm like, man, I know he's going to land that shot. And uh, I trained myself for it. He landed, he landed that shot in the first round. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he put me down in the first round. And I was like, damn, already? But I remember, like, 
I was already in that mind frame where I'm like, yo, I know he was gonna he was gonna land the shot. So I kind of just waited for the round to end on my knee. I got up at the eight count and I went back to the corner. I said, all right, whatever, it happened. Let's go. And I feel like too, a lot of people, when they drop for the first time, mm -hmm. they don't take that moment to like, all right, let me get myself together and like yeah. use this 10 seconds, maybe eight, yeah. maybe four, maybe five, but use this little bit of time to like get myself yeah, together. Yeah, to get yourself yeah, together, yeah. exactly. But yeah. it's all like, it's so much going on and you're in there by yourself. Like yeah. how do you, I guess, prepare for that like moment? Yeah, I think it's just, it really comes down to like what you made of, you know, cause the ring's always going to expose you for who you are, you know? So you, you get dropped and you might respond like a coward cause it's like, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's just that's that's your DNA, right? Or you. Hey, but no boxer wants to be known yeah. for being that. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the problem is the ring is like the ring is like gonna tell on you. Right. You can't front in the right. ring. It's the right. Ring right. Gonna tell you on can't you. cover that it's, up. Yeah, you can't cover it up. It's like that. That's why people love warriors because it's mm -hmm. like yo, he, he like he was cut and he fought. He went down and he fought. Right. That's why like you know no one wants to lose. Absolutely. No one wants to lose. But it's like, if you lose with that badge of honor, where it's like, yo, he went out on his shield, like he went right. out like a G. It's like, you're, you're gonna be respected. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? No one's gonna look down on you. I think it's the fighters that, you know, if a fighter quits or a fighter's complaining in the corner, I can't see because there's blood in his eye or whatever. Absolutely. You know, and they're just giving kind of those excuses. Right. It's like people kind of lose respect Absolutely. for that. Behavior, absolutely, so. absolutely. Because we we fighters, we're supposed to be warriors. Right, you know absolutely. I mean? Being a fighter and being a warrior, like how do you deal with like, you know, everybody deals, I feel like, with wins great. You know, you're mm. winning, you're on top, you the king. Yeah. How do you deal with like a loss mentally? Yeah. It's hard, it's hard. You know, my, my my career has been like a rocky road, <laughs> right? <laughs> Where it's been like high big but you fighting anybody yeah i'm you fighting, fighting anybody that's that's why you get yeah. the respect that you get yeah. you fighting anybody yeah, i'm fighting everybody but it's been like you know ups and downs and then there's been fights where it's like i obviously won the fight but then i got robbed and you know it's you know in boxing you just you just got to have a short-term memory mm -hmm. you know and you can't dwell on 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 what happened it's like okay what can i do to be better absolutely you know so i think a lot of it is that and then trying to figure out all right what was the problem what can i do is there a, somebody in my team i need to add um what was i doing wrong it's just kind of evaluating yourself i think it's i think it's real easy to blame people when you lose yes like well this this the trainer told me yeah. this and the son frowned or whatever whatever but i think sometimes the most important thing is like look at yourself in the mirror yeah. and be like all right what did you do absolutely. you know what i'm saying Absolutely. So I just did come down to that. Absolutely. I I I really, you know, just being in Philly and growing up with old school fighters uh, like a Bernard and trainers like Brother Nazim and being around those guys, you know, it's like boxing is life. It Absolutely. goes together. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in life you take L's. You going you gonna go through that heartbreak or you might lose a, a loved one, but it's like you can't let that hold you back. You gotta keep moving. I think that's how boxing. That's how, that's how you gotta treat your fights and your absolutely, losses. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. It's definitely a part of life. Like nobody's, you know, perfect, and things happen, and yeah. you just gotta kind of move forward from that. Yeah. All right, big fight coming up. Canelo yeah. and Charo. You fought Charo. Yeah. yeah Have yeah. you ever been in the ring with Canelo? Have you ever like you know hmm. had that interaction with him, spar with him, any nah. of that? I mean, we never, we never got the spar. We, we were supposed to fight a few times and never played out, but I know him. He's a good dude. Um, I spar. I, I mean, I fought uh, Jamel in two, I think it was like thir late thirteen or, or early fourteen. And you had to go up. I had to drop back down. You had to drop. Back I had down. moved up in weight, and I had to drop back down. Uh, so it's a great fight. I think it's. Um, I think it's a fight that Jamal has to be the most disciplined he's ever been in strategy Absolutely. and game plan and not let his ego and his pride get to him. It's good to have that, but I think in this fight, he has to really stick to a game plan and, and use his boxing ability. Absolutely. You know? Because so the, pressure, the pressure's on Canelo. You think so? Yeah, the pressure's on Canelo because Charlo's already undisputed at 54. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to move up to 68. Right. So, you know, he's the one that's like, he's the one that's taking that, that chance and that risk. That's true. So, you know, he's not expected to win for the most part. People want him to, there's some people that are rooting for him or, or saying he, he's going to win the fight. But for the most part, 
he's not expected to win. So I think the pressure's on Canelo. You think? Who do you think is going to win the fight? Um, you know, I think I think we're going to see like uh, the, uh, the old Canelo come back. I think Canelo got away from the head movement. I think he got comfortable to walking guys down with that with the guard up and catching shots and shooting back. And I think um, he's going to get back to the slipping, the slipping, mm -hmm. rolling, body shots. He he going. I think I think we're gonna see a little bit of that swag back. A lot of dancing yeah, going on. Yeah, I think he's gonna get back to his you know his sharpness because he has to. He's fighting a guy that comes from a, a smaller weight class, so the hand speed he might actually match Canelo with the hand speed. Canelo's always the faster guy. Right. So this is gonna be the first time where Canelo in a while where Canelo's fighting a guy that's gonna match him in speed. And so, both of them got power. Yeah, they both got power, but they both got power. But you know, Canelo he he didn't he didn't fall Kovalev. He, yeah. I think he fought bigger punchers. Yeah. So I think he got the better chin, but who knows? Yeah. Anything can happen. That's the beautiful thing about boxing. It's yeah. like you could say this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen. Next thing you know, it's like something crazy. Yeah. You know? No, definitely. It only takes one punch, you know, one good punch, hit mm -hmm. that button, and that's it. Yeah, that's so it's 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 a crazy sport, a very um, you know, entertaining sport as yeah. humans, I feel like we like to see people fight. Like we, <laughs> I mean, like let's be real. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's the oldest sport in history. For Gladiator sure. days. You know, it's like it, it's. You know, I don't want to go to a fight. Me personally, and I'm speaking for myself. And and I'm only gonna speak for myself because <laughs> people judge you all the time. But I feel like I go to a fight and I want to see like a knockout. I want to mm. see like you know that's what you pay for you yeah, know what i'm saying yeah. you you want to see you don't want to see people like defending the whole time and it's just like yeah. you know it's not a fun fight to see like you want to see them actually go toe to toe for sure. and it's like it's it makes it more interesting yeah. you know so it's entertainment absolutely it's entertainment. It's like you absolutely. go to a ball game you want to see home runs you exactly see low, low base hits and exactly so, yeah, exactly boxing. you want to see the top of the top fight the top of the top and yeah. i think it's going to be a great fight um you know uh Personally, I think that um, they're both great fighters, both powerful fighters, both quick fighters. Um, like you said, if they they both stay disciplined, yeah. you know, which um, I don't think Canelo has a problem with like being disciplined and yeah. you know being on top of his shit. Yeah. Um, if they don't let ego get in the way, because mm -hmm. they're both like you know two kings yeah, that yeah, are yeah. going to toe to toe, and I just feel like, who, uh, you know. I think Canelo's gonna take it. Yeah, That's yeah, just yeah. personally, um, you know. But both great fighters. And I'm I'm with you on that. I I I, I'm, I favor Canelo slightly, but we might see something different in Charlo because yeah. this is the biggest stage Absolutely. he's ever been. Where sometimes that brings the best out of somebody. Absolutely. Whereas like you see a whole different. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You see a whole different beast. So. And sometimes it brings the worst out of them too. True. So it's like, you know, <laughs> you true. just don't know which side <laughs> yeah, they're going to yeah, yeah. swing on. That's so true. it's just like, it's, it's going to be an interesting fight. And you know, that's, are you are you working that fight? No, no. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm gonna stay home. I'm chilling. Okay. Yeah. No, it's gonna be a crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. fight. It's gonna be a crazy we'll watch it fight. At the house. Yeah. No, it's gonna For be sure. a good. And I'm I'm so sad because, um, D's in Scotland right now. So oh, right. yeah. So I'm like I'm by myself, <laughs> and I'm like we usually watch, watch yeah, the fights yeah. together. So I'm like this is a huge fight that Without. like you know we would have been at. Yeah. But it's like he's in Scotland, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm like sad, but. I'll watch it with like my dad or my brother or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. We're all into it. like it's crazy because since I've been with Deontay, um, we I, I'm like not watching any other sports. Like it's not it's yeah, not yeah. no like basketball, football. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. like I'm like oh the Super Bowl happened. The, you know, <laughs> like the NBA playoffs happened. Like yeah. when did this happen? Because boxing's That's year right. round. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah. know, it's like and you're tuned in year and, round. And really good fights happening. Like, yes, yeah, yeah, great fights, fights, great yeah. fights, and like people are like the best of the best is fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, what is a, a fight that you that might come up or that you feel like would be a good fight that you would want to see? I would want to see. I definitely want to see Tank and Shakur. Ooh, that's Tank gonna be a good one. That's, that that right that's there, that's fifty be, fifty. Yeah, I don't even know how to call that one. Ooh, that's gonna be interesting. And Shakur is coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tank kind of like you know he's got more than Shakur, but they both got power too. That's yeah, gonna yeah. be a good fight. That's a good fight. That's gonna be a good and fight. And on the heavyweight side, I would want to see uh, Wilder and Joshua. Yeah, that yeah. you know we've been trying to do that for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been like. Ugh, 
that's yeah. you know boxing's politics mm -hmm. so fingers crossed that's yeah, sooner yeah, than later sure. we've been we've been wanting that for a long time yeah. and it's just you know it's gotta happen yeah, like yeah. it's gotta no, happen that fight gotta you happen. know it has sure. to happen and hopefully it's um sometime next year yeah, yeah, and yeah. it just hopefully it's not too far yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah, we don't yeah. gotta go all the way to the other side of the globe to, yeah. to fight because no, it's, it's but you know that's a fight that that's a fight that could be like um that's a fight where you could do that neutral you could do that like in um where did where did uh ali and foreman fight um, it was, the, was that Manila? No, no, that was that was that was Frazier. Oh, okay. I think they did in, they did the fight in Africa. Africa, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be dope because they're that both be Nigerian. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, they're both Nigerian. They would dope. get so much love there too. Dope. Yeah, that, would be, that would be dope. And Africa would be dope. Yeah. But it gotta happen. No, like I'm you. like it's that's that's gonna <laughs> be a great great fight. Yeah. And and you know I'm always. Team yeah. Deontay all the yeah. way, so it's, and it, it's and different for me. No, I feel you. And the thing is, is like right now, out of the two fighters, I like I like Deontay's attitude a lot better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it's like it's it's kind of like he went back to like wanting to like learn. Yes. He like he went back to the drawing board. Yeah, absolutely. Where um, where I feel like Joshua's still trying to figure it out right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's, and it's too like you know um. Deontay had a very humbling moment mm -hmm. and um, it, I feel like mentally it got him back, like you said, yeah. to like, this is what I'm doing. This is the discipline that I need to be at. This mm -hmm. is how I want to have my camp. Yeah. This is, you know, like it, it, it takes away that it gets you humble. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it takes away that like that, that feeling of like superiority. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, all right, yeah. we got to get back to, yeah. you know, what we was doing day yeah, one so it's sure. yeah it's 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 because it's, it's, it's easy to get distracted in the yes. sport like feel yourself because yes. you got your ego absolutely and you know you can kick yeah, anyone's yeah. ass like it's like that, it's yeah, a yeah. different type of respect i tell deontay all the time i'm like it's a different type of respect that fighters get because they beat ass yeah, for yeah. a living you yeah. know what i'm saying like the people that like it's not like you know you have people that are rappers you have people that are actors but fighters get a different respect. You yeah. know, like you respect all different like careers and walks mm -hmm. of life, but you're not beating ass. Like yeah. every man wants to <laughs> know sure. how to beat ass. Yeah, it's it's sure. a different type of like yeah, yeah. respect level yeah, as a yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like it's the masculinity in for it sure, is just, sure. it's different, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cause I've seen like him talk to football teams and they're all like, what did he say? Like yeah, tuned yeah. in, you know? Like so it's like, yeah, it's, it's I'm like, damn, like, like yeah. they're really it's, listening. It's, it's, it's the ultimate warrior sport. Yeah. Because it's, it's no, it's no tag team. You can't tag yeah. someone in when you're tired or like it. You know, a player comes in and subs for you. It's like you win there by yourself. Yeah. 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 By yourself, knowing that a lot of people depend on you. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's your corner, whether it's your family, whether it's your woman, whether it's yeah, your yeah. kids. Like they're all depending on one person. Mm -hmm. To be successful and that's yeah. a lot of pressure yeah, for sure. how do you deal with the pressure of like that yeah. that weight of burden or yeah. you know just the the weight of having to be like all right i gotta i gotta succeed in this yeah i just i i try to get you know spiritually connected and i mean um just you know uh i i like to like block everything out and just go away you know it's funny because I know when I have a good. I know when I'm gonna have a good fight, depending on how the camp is. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's just stay spiritually connected with God and just you know, um, just stay away from distraction. Do you meditate? Yeah, yeah, I meditate. You know, chill. I I, I do camp sometimes in Puerto Rico, so. Mm -hmm. Like I'm at the beach and I just kind of. A lot of back. people go to Puerto Rico yeah. for their camps now. Like, what's what's what is the the thing in Puerto Rico that I feel like leads fighters <laughs> to to go to camps? Puerto there? Rico is just well, I, I'm Puerto Rican, so okay, so I love it. But at the same time, it's just like you know, the weather's great to lose weight. The people are great. The vibe, the food is good. It's just peaceful. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So it's just a peaceful environment. It's not chaotic. It's just real peaceful where you get through your job. That's yeah. amazing. Okay, speaking of peace, you are engaged. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> on you. that. That's amazing. Thank you, thank That's you. a blessing. Um, kids, are y'all talking about kids? Are you talking? So, are you working on the marriage <laughs> first, or what yeah, are y'all yeah. doing with that? Probably a little bit down the line. Yeah, and some kids, but you know, I got two girls now. That's amazing. I got two girls. I got a, I got a high school. 
Oh my Gorgeous goodness. Started high school, it's crazy. She, so she's in ninth grade right yeah, now? She's in ninth grade. Oh my a, gosh. She's a seven year old. So oh my gosh. So sure. I, well, we have a lot of kids. We got eight kids. Deontay wants four more. <laughs> And I'm just like, whew, that's a lot, you know? (laughs) So we have two that's in high school right now and um, 18, 17, both in high school. And it's it's very different than, you know, the five-year-old, the nine-year-old, the seven-year-old. Like, it's a very, we have, like, all ages, like, all spanned out. Wow. Y'all got eight. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's like. He wants four more. And he wants four more. And I'm like, you're not cheaper by the dozen, sir. I don't know what you're thinking. And he's like, he just wants this legacy. So, you know, I interviewed him as well, too. And um, we talked about, like, he wants an even number. And I'm like, we're at eight. It's even. So, and then I'm like, well, there's not. There's five girls and three boys. So he's like, I want more boys. And then I'm like, okay, well, what about 10? Because that's, you know, the compromise. In a relationship, you got to compromise. And he's like, well, there needs to be more boys than there is girls so they can protect the girls. I'm like, nah, it don't don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So we're figuring out the, like, 10, 12. I mean, he just skipped, like, one more kid. Like, he just went from, like, 8 to 12. Like, I'm like, what? What do you mean? I I would assume that's... I mean, I, I don't think I could have that many. I mean, but it's a lot. Yeah, it's it's a, a lot, lot, but it's so much fun. Like yeah, holidays sure. are so much fun because there's so much different personalities. Yeah. You know, youngest one, the ringleader. Like That's you dope. know what I'm saying. One super quiet. One's you know one plays basketball. One plays soccer. Like they're just That's everywhere. Wild. Like That's you dope, know, though. it's like it's super fun. It's super dope. And you guys don't have a boy. Yeah, yeah. So I That's know a, you want a boy. I mean, All I mean, men I mean, want my, boys. I mean boy. Yeah. I mean boys. So and it's like your legacy. You yeah, know. So sure. it's just like. Um, if you have a boy, I think kids are great. I love. Oh, I love, kids are beautiful. I love it. I love kids are beautiful, and it and it like changes your perspective on yeah. life because you're living for someone mm-hmm. other than yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, like you have a spouse is different than having a kid. Yeah, it's a whole different innocent love. Like you Definitely. know, it's it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And you learn, and as you get older, it's like you learn different things because it's like my 14 year old. I had her when I was I was really young. I was in my mm-hmm. early 20s. And my seven-year-old, I had when I was 30. So it's like, I feel like you appreciate things differently because yes. you have experience yes. with the second one. Yes. So and you're like starting over. And yeah, it's just yeah, like, yeah. oh, okay, now I know how to do it. Yeah. It's like, one, is hard because you're just learning. But two, is like, okay, now I got some help. Yeah. And now I know what to do. <laughs> now sure. it's not like my first rodeo. So yeah, it just yeah. makes it so much easier. Yeah. But when you have eight and you're traveling (laughs) and like you know traveling gets crazy we went to a universal studios and we had like a whole bus like it was crazy (laughs) like we had you know how rides are and there's like two to a car or like we're taking the whole like whole line (laughs) and they're looking at us like i'm like sorry costco sorry like you know i look crazy you know but it's it's so much fun and it's a blessing like you know if if I can produce a hundred babies without pain and without <laughs> fucking up my body. I'm all for it, you know. But yeah. it's just like the 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 time that I feel like the kids want. They don't know money. They don't yeah. know like anything else but spending time and you know doing things together. Yeah. And we're both busy, so it's yeah, like yeah. you know he has his thing going on. I have my thing going on, and it's like I feel like it wouldn't be fair to a child, two mm-hmm. child, three child, four child if we didn't give them the time that they yeah. needed. So yeah. that's that's kind of like more my thing outside of They got each other like, too. Yeah, they that's got each dope. other. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's almost like it's different because even like the five-year-old, you know, like if I'm here or whatever and she'll have the nanny at the house and she's like, but I want to spend time with you. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's a di- and then you feel bad and it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. damn, like I can't even chill with my kid right now because I got to work. Yeah, yeah. And you don't realize that until like you're an adult mm. and, you know, <laughs> you're like, okay, yeah. you got to work because we got to eat, you yeah, know. Yeah, so it's, sure. it's a different understanding when you're an adult than when you're a child yeah. when it comes to like the time time spent sure. with them yeah, yeah. so i feel like that i just feel like it wouldn't be fair mm-hmm. you know to be like yeah. i'm not chilling with my my parents yeah do you, you know? do homeschooling at the crib i did i did do homeschool um for my you daughter have like a whole class i'm telling you <laughs> literally but then they're all different grades so yeah, it's like crazy you know they're sure. learning different things but i did homeschool for my daughter and she's <laughs> it's crazy because um she goes to this like christian academy okay and um 
<laughs> we had a situation the other day where I got irritated with her and I rolled my eyes and I'm like, all right, KK. And I rolled my eyes and she's like, girl, you look like a demon. And I was like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you go to a Christian That's school yeah, and you yeah, yeah. all look like a demon. You could have said I look crazy. That's you know, funny, like yeah. it's, but she's like super smart and, and just like learning and growing by the day. And it's just like, that's my only thing. Like I dealt with my father being in the military, so he was gone a lot. Oh, so yeah, okay, okay. So I'm like, I I want to spend time with my kids, mm -hmm. you know. And it's just like I know, like we're both still working, so I yeah, feel yeah. like you know now that the kids are older, a little bit older, they understand a little bit more. Yeah. But it's like you know the the time when they're newborns that you got to take off work and yeah, just yeah. it's a different. It's a different. Yeah, it's, it's a different. Whole job. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Sure. It's definitely a job. And yeah, I yeah. feel like everything in life is a job. Yeah. You know, relationships are jobs. Parenting is a job. It takes a village, you yeah, know, for, for sure. everything. For sure. For everything. So for everyone that comes on, yeah. we play this game. Okay. Would you rather? I play with you too. Nothing uh -huh. crazy. Uh -huh. We got cool. the PG-13 version <laughs> this time. I usually have the like X-rated version and it's, it gets wild. So I get some? Yes. Okay. So we'll get six cards each. And it's a game of with you rather. So you're asking, um, you're picking two cards and you're asking, would you rather do what's on this card or that card? <laughs> this is funny. So, okay. So I read two? Yes. Okay, okay. If you want to change them, feel free. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> this That's one's funny. One. Have all your illness treated by a 12th century doctor. Ugh. <laughs> I think I think both of us would do this one. Drink plain water for the rest of your life. I would so drink water for the rest of my life. <laughs> okay, boom. I got mine. You want to go first or you want me to go first? Mine's are kind of regular. Oh, you, can, you can pick one nah, if you cool. want. It's cool because I'm going to just keep going through them. Man. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't never going to slap. <laughs> All right. All right. My first question is, would you rather fight an ostrich to death <laughs> or permanently sound like you just inhaled helium? Oh, I'm going I'm to I'm <laughs> kill that ostrich. <laughs> I'm gonna put Facts. that ostrich on the headlock. <laughs> you boxing the, yeah, the that ostrich <laughs> down. I'm like good. the helium is just gonna be crazy. Yeah, nah, nah, like, I'm not doing that. I mean, I would choose the helium, but I'm, I'm not sure a fighter. I, I'm sure I could kill the ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, would you rather always answer honestly when people ask you how you're doing, hmm, or lose one tooth per year until you're until they're gone? I love my teeth. I yeah. went through braces, I did Invisalign twice, and got veneers. So I'm not fucking my right. teeth up. I'm not fucking right, them right, up. Right. I'm doing wh whatever the other one was. Yeah, the other one was um, always answer honestly when people ask you how you're doing. Yeah, that's fine. Like yeah, if, yeah. You, if I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad day. If I feel like, you know, I'm stressed out, I'm stressed the fuck out. Right, I need right, help, right. you know? Sure. Like I'm gonna be honest, that's fine. For I'll sure. take that. All right, have all your food chewed by another person before eating it, disgusting. Or always feel like you didn't sleep the night before. Damn. Exhaustion. Depends. It depends who's chewing, who's chewing the food. <laughs> <laughs> no facts. But always, yeah, like you're I just know, gonna have like nah, always nah, nah. like mushy yeah, food I'd and then you gotta the, eat that? Yeah, the sleep. Yeah, the sleep. like that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, the sleep. Uh, so this one is, uh, would you rather never speak to the last person you text ever again? Hmm. Or wear braces with headgear for the rest of your life? Oh, I'm doing the text. I'm Word. doing the text. Word. <laughs> I'm doing the text. I don't even know who I, who I text last. Oh, Maria. <laughs> Our bartender. Sorry, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> That's I funny. can't wear the headgear now. I'm gonna look crazy. <laughs> and then I talk on my podcast and I'm just like headgeared out. No, I'm not doing it. Okay. Last but not least, be unable to distinguish between your dreams and reality. That'd be crazy. 
or be unable to wear clothes that cover your belly button. So crop tops all oh, day. Oh, hell no. <laughs> I'd rather not, you know, be aware of my reality and my dreams. That's yeah, crazy. that would be crazy, though. Yeah, Imagine, I'm not, I'm like, you don't know that. it's real, and you're like... Well, you know, that's interesting. Because I, I guess if you imagine things... Yeah, so, that'd be on. crazy. So that's like the Matrix in yeah, real life. Yeah. All right, yeah, for sure. That, that is kind of crazy. Yeah. Like if you dream something and you're just like, oh, I can fly. And then you just go on top of a building and you're like, I'm going to try to fly. And that's then you wild. know what I'm saying? That's wild. Let me Insane. see this one. Uh, would you uh, be able to grow hair anywhere on your body? Or drink orange juice immediately after brushing your teeth every morning. That's not too bad. Yeah, I'm doing the orange juice. Yeah, I don't like hair juice. at all besides on my head and my eyelashes. Yeah, 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 <laughs> Deontay yeah. cannot stand lashes. He's I'm like, all the damn lashes. Some some people complain about not about not brushing their teeth before they have breakfast. Breakfast, yeah. But it's like, I got to brush my teeth and then have breakfast. Yeah, same. I don't care I, about I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving my room. <laughs> If I don't make my yeah. bread, brush my teeth and wash my face. Yeah. Like I'm not going downstairs to eat breakfast yeah. or be in anybody's face yeah. if I'm not brushing my. That's somebody crazy. was like, somebody was like, that tastes. I remember somebody told me a couple of days ago that it tastes nasty when you drink orange juice after toothpaste. But I'm like, bro, but like, your mouth dirty. Yeah, and it's like you're <laughs> like all that like saliva and all that yeah. builds up like the bad breath in your mouth yeah. and then you're putting food and then swallowing it so that's yeah. even nastier yeah. than having like a clean mouth yeah. and then going to eat. Clean mouth. Yeah, sure. and have a clean mouth, drink water and then clean your palate and then mm -hmm. go eat. Like For sure. That's crazy. Definitely. Yeah, I I've never it's heard funny. of that like orange juice one yeah. ever. So if you brush your teeth and Like they say, like, you know, some people say they'd rather eat their breakfast and drink orange juice and then brush their teeth after. But I'm like, I'd rather clean my mouth period. and then I don't care if I taste a little, if it's a little minty. Yeah. I actually don't mind that because I know my mouth is clean. Clean. Exactly. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> insane. Okay. Tell everybody what you got going on, where they can find you, yeah, yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, you catch me on my Instagram, King Gob. What's my Instagram? <laughs> Yo, my Instagram. I think King God Rosado. That's my Instagram and my Twitter, and then uh, and then I'll be commentating fights October fourteen in in Mexico on the nice. Zone. So yeah, man, catch me there. Yeah, catch him on the Zone October fourteen. King Gabe Rosado on Instagram. All things that he has going on, and that is it for Telly Talk. Mm -hmm.